Hello my soccer universe and yes I'm wearing the cheerful cologne uh, carnival kit from last season because yeah that was one of the results that did go my way but overall I have to say that today Sunday was super frustrating for, for me it is so frustrating that I'm actually shooting this video now instead because I, I don't want to watch any soccer any, any anymore because I'm I had it more or less and it's all down to, to my two favorite teams Milan Serie A video is the fourth one in sequence, probably, if not the fifth one. Uh, and Lusk more or less playing at the same time. Half an hour, deep difference. And both of them having demoralizing losses. And yeah, we'll talk a teeny bit about those losses, uh, about the loss of Lusk, because I honestly, I had it. I, you will get a little bit of my frustration, but I, I will not uh, spend too much time. Uh, no, let's see, I will spend some time on uh that loss for sure um but there is also quite some interesting issues in germany that we do have to talk about and you saw it in the headline yeah we've we have the fc hollywood back we meaning of course bayern munich uh and i have to dig a little bit deeper because what happened on the field was by far not as interesting what's happening off the field uh and it overshadows not only holland returning but uh such a goal filled round if you were watching on Saturday afternoon, like I did, the uh, conference, uh, first half was kind of so and so a little bit, and then the second half it exploded. I think they had in they had in the first six games they had twenty uh, in in the five games they had twenty three goals. First five five games twenty two to twenty twenty three goals, uh, absolute madness, and uh, most of them were scored, of course, in foot. But. Let's go to Austria, where, I mean, the shocker. And the funny thing is, all the four teams here, uh, their expected points totals decreased because they all had Karada disappointing re results, but they still repeat the best one because they only got a draw. All the other three lost. So my, how I, how I announced it, the big four teams in Austria, like now it's two, <laughs> two round, round, rounds in a row are the losers. That's how it goes. And yeah, it probably means I need to get some other Austrian teams as well. So the big shock was that Austria Klagenfurt beat Salzburg. Salzburg hitting a really a rough patch at the moment. Uh, last week they only managed to draw, then the Champions Leagues, uh, that was nothing. Uh, they had already before in the Champions League. So I, I, I actually think there's a really good chance that Salzburg crash out of the Champions League in fourth place. Uh, at the moment because their form is really going down. It's not for not, uh, for lack of trying, but you know, you hit on counter attacks and if, uh, uh, how about, what's his name? Gimmich Bazi uh, scores the first goal on a counter attack and then, then I think he sets up the second one, but pink those two really uh, being there uh, in the 80s and it's 2-0. Christensen gets a goal back very, 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 very late on, but so, uh, Klang for just riding their momentum and beating the big boys in Salzburg. I mean, another big win is for Tirol, who now suddenly get it going. How I wish was that, and Wolfsburg also bounced back from their loss. I actually watched the conference uh, in Austria, uh, at least for, 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 for most of the time between Austria, Vienna and Sturm Graz, and I gotta say, that win for Austria, Vienna, 2-1, Probably even a little bit flattering to Sturm Graz, another team who's hitting a little bit the skids at the moment. Um, first half slight advantage for us, Oscar Sachs, the second half, uh, Huskovic uh, gives them the lead. Kuhn is the sand off for a tackle from behind, it was rather clear, clumsy when you could make it 2-0. Uh, it was only one winner, although former Austria player Zakaria uh, pulls one back. Hartberg Lask. <sighs> In many ways, it's a game that went like every game uh, that last lost to a lower team. Uh, controlling possession, uh, maybe a little bit too uh, clumsy going forward in many ways. I mean, that for sure, not very effective, but the game largely under control. However, Hartberg in the first half, completely concentrating on defense and the second half you know you pop up for the occasional counter-attack and with the second shot on goal the first one was not even that the dangerous Tadish score make makes it one nil uh where they had once a little bit numerical advantage and it was not even it was it was like a five to four or or, 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 or whatever but they can completely forget Tadish, no relations to dujan Tadish, of course one nil but then last really 
loads of pressure, missing quite a few chances by Karam, uh, especially Karamoko, who then gets the equalizer. But I at, at, at that point I saw, yeah, you might turn it ac 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 actually around. So this was in 86 minutes. Uh, in stoppage time, uh, a Hartberg corner, where Hartberg is committing many men forward. I mean, it, both teams were going for the win at that point. And then suddenly from Hartberg, Alaska has a four on one. The ball on the halfway line, there's one Hartberg defender, there are four Alaska players. And they managed to mess that one up by playing it too slow. And yes, you had a game in Tel Aviv, you had a lot of travel. It was probably not nice to uh, not being able to play at home at least, but you had because you had to travel again to Hartberg, which is a bus ride that's not too long. Uh, but there were some changes made to, 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 to the squad and doesn't ex it absolutely doesn't excuse that you if you have a four on one that you're not scoring. And then we say in German you got the Rechnung wurde dir präsentiert, you got the bill for it. Last minute corner kick. And they again forget Tadic. And with it's a walk of win for Hartberg. Frustrating to the core. I'm seriously frustrated because it's another game that, that you should never have lost. I mean, even if it's a draw, it's all right. But and I understand travel, blah, blah, blah. But absolutely, I'm so, I was so mad after. I mean, mad, dejected more, uh, frustrated. Not even that, that mad. Uh, but yeah, it's. This is gonna be a real tough season, and at the moment, I mean, Alta has a game in hand against Sturm that they play midweek. The way Sturm is doing at the moment, I can, and despite Alta not being good, I can very well see Sturm losing his game and Lask being again in last position. There's no, uh, to me, there's almost no chance. I mean, if they would have beaten Hartberg today, I would say, ah, oh, you have a chance maybe going into the championship playoff. No. You have no chance at the moment. Uh, it is very, very re re remote. Late game read, repeat, 2-2, two, two, but, you know, haven't seen much. Let's go to Germany. And uh, while I have here... Now, let's go to the result. My Stuttgart with a huge win over Mainz on Friday. Uh, the Bochum-Freiburg game is um, remarkable, not only because Bochum came back in a second half. I mean, uh, Linhardt gave Freiburg a lead in the 51st, but Polta almost immediately e e equalized. And then Pantovic scores the winner and the last time he scored the winner was this against um it was like it was just before the break i don't recall now i guess home they were, were playing but he scored out of his own half he rolled it in to make it 2-0 this time he also also scored as a winner because he saw the goalie far far out from 45 meters out that guy has only scored two bundesliga goals 45 meters and 60 meters Go figure. Pretty much uh, re uh, remarkable. And a team Bochum that I always was kind of a little bit so and so on because, you know, they're, they're the, 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 they, we call it the gray mouse, uh, you know, a team that doesn't really bother one or, or that. But on the other side, I'm reading at the moment a book about the history of the German Bundesliga from the eyes of a uh, former Bochum manager. So they are getting some, some, some sympathies. And with those two finishes, yeah, maybe Bochum could relieve the lack of blue back there um as i said it was a mad round Köln winning the derby over gladbach 4-1 in a game that was very back and forth uh first half i mean both teams had pretty good chances of getting the lead then ljubicic gives uh Köln the lead in the 55th um they have a chance to kind of pad the lead uh, but then for about 10 15 minutes uh, loads of pressure from Gladbach uh, and Jonas Hoffmann in the end uh, scoring. However, then Florian Neuhaus, who had just came on uh, like 10 minutes before, plays a horrible pass into Uth, who just takes the ball into the net. 2-1 and then a little bit uh, later from a kick, Andrzej Duda makes it 3-1 and that settles the derby. Although there was a chance for Gladbach to come back. I want to say even this or the goal that was then this this allowed for uh, offside very very late and then anderson makes it a proper win with 4-1 Köln fans of course celebrating everywhere and i loved mark Uth then after watch um in the uh, in, in, in the interview afterwards he, he, he said well and now we have two days off and the interview said do you know already that, that, that you have two days off and he said no we demand two days off 
you know, hello, Derby winner. And then they ask the coach and say, well, if he demands it, he's going to get two days off with a big smile. So, yeah, that was fun. See, I can also smile on a day like this. Um, Greuther Fürth against Hoffheim. Greuther Fürth really thought this is the one time they have a chance to win a game in the Bundesliga. They even take the league lead. However, uh, it doesn't take long. The Hoffenberg, uh, Hoffenheim, Hoffenberg, Hoffenheim turns it around. Uh, and then um, Tillman again, right after the half, 2-2. Greuther Fürth uh, seems they're in, in it again. But then, uh, in a very short succession, 57, 67, uh, 62nd and 66th, it's 5-2 Hoffenheim. A minute later, Hirgota makes it 3-5. Is there a chance? No, because Bebu, who has been, sco I, I think, scored, uh, finishes his hat-trick, although in a very imperfect way, so he scores three, three goals, uh, settles the game 6-3. It's not a scoreline that you see every day. It's also not every day that you see salmon pink against uh, white and green. So, yeah, uh, weird game. Uh, Augsburg score in the last kick of the, of the game. Um, Greg Rekic scores and equalized the, even the leading goal for Hertha was kind of a, a, a mistake. And then um, Wolfsburg in the second minute already have a lead against Dortmund. But then it is all Dortmund. Who only managed an equalizer through a pretty clear penalty, but in the second half, then uh, Marlen uh, sends the game Dortmund's way. Then Wolfsburg came and it became a much more even, even, even game. And uh, then the ace comes on in the 73rd minute. Marlen comes off, Holland comes on, and it doesn't take long that in his 50th Bundesliga game, he scores his 50th goal. And then there's, of course, a sad celebration where he points at the fan, and the female fan, all in Wolfsburg gear, flips him off more or less uh, uh, that was a fun thing and now uh, we are at Bayern um, that Bayern win thanks to Sané 1-0 over Bielefeld okay we report that however the big story in Bayern was not only all those corona cases you know uh, starting from Kimi who is not um, who, who despite leading an anti-corona campaign, not being vaccinated, although he promotes vaccinations, kind of, that caused a lot of lost dirt. And of course, many Bayern players suddenly being uh, contracting COVID, starting from the coach to the squad, and now Kimi, him, 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 him himself, to the point that uh, Bayern is even saying, yeah, you know, if you're not vaccinated, we're going to withhold your salary for the time that you're not playing. Uh, so that was going. But... There is much more trouble uh, glowing under the shiny red carpet. And it came out at the yearly members meeting, uh, which is actually a big event in Germany. And Bayern is a members club. So uh, there's a lot of things happening. And of course, the IR comes because of the Qatar sleeve sponsorship. Uh, Bayern has been going to Qatar for quite a while now and the fans are not happy because of all the human rights issues and especially the ultras who have been showing consistently some banners showing that the Bayern president, I think Heine and Oli Khan really going against them very, very um, publicly. It went even so far that uh, some ultras that supported um, uh, the, t the amateur team in the third league um, showing a banner you know we're against monday games because monday games is something that german football fans hate a lot that one of those fans then got banned for life from bayern munich just for holding up the banner because he has been very vocal before but the one thing that he got framed for was exactly holding up that banner which so many other people do and uh even uh you know bayern paid the proper lawyers to actually even win the appeal uh something uh, uh, win at least the first round it is now under appeal and so a whole lot of things were flaming up and of course he's a member so he can come despite uh, restrictions and they put members can put certain points up for discussion uh, and they put up the, the Qatar membership and the motion to uh, require from sponsors to um, you know agree to basic human rights and and so on the problem is that after a speech where uh, both um, the president and Oliver Kahn basically said, yeah, it's a rough time for Bayern because there's the big money teams uh, and it's a hard um, 
it's hard surroundings for Bayern to be successful in Europe, but we still manage blah, 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 blah. They just don't, didn't decide to put the motion on, up, 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 up there and drew out the meeting. And at midnight, without even considering that motion, uh, that many, many fans wanted to have gone, so that just closed the meeting and it descended into booze and in very contention, in, in very, um, you know, non-unified scenes, which is the one thing that Lothar Matthäus then said uh, before the uh, Bayern Bielefeld game. You know, the strength of Bayern was that they were at least always united. The fans, there might be disagreements, but then there was a Uli Hoeneß who faced them. And yeah, in typically uh, Uli Hoeneß style said, you know, what do you want? Or, you know, but at least he got the people on board uh, to back them. And that is completely missing because even all, uh, all Oliver Kahn is lacking any of the emotion that he was uh, known for when he was playing. And so, yeah, uh, I heard today that the Bayern president is calling the person who made the motion. And yeah, uh, probably he's not as strong as a personality. I mean, he's a businessman. He's not uh, not used to football or, or whatever. But to the words, it's a really, really, really bad um, feeling overall. Uh, and it's a very much, you know, the Bayern motto is Mir Samir. We are who we are. And it was very much the feeling at the moment is we are who we are and you are who you are, the fans, not the Bene. And there is a big divide at Bayern happening. And with all the Corona issues, it seems like uh, behind the scenes, there is so much trouble at Bayern that may reflect on the field as well. And is very now in interesting. Will the team rally? Because what's the next game? It is playing in Dortmund. And Dortmund, despite not being great, is smelling blood at the moment. They think they can get to Bayern. So that's why I... To me, it's a hugely interesting issue uh, that is happening. And I think Bayern can either grow or collapse. Having seen Bayern before, I actually think they will more likely grow. But just wanted to say that. To round out the round... Um, round out the round. Frankfurt 2-1 over Union Berlin and Leverkusen deepens the crisis at Leipzig with a 3-1, clinically 3-1 win. I already said next round we have the big one between Bayern and Dortmund uh, Saturday, so mark your calendars for that one. Uh, other than that, I mean, Union Berlin, Le Leipzig is it's such a weird game, very, uh, you know, the one, the fan-based uh, cult team versus the, against the plastic team, so that that is another one that's kind of sticks out to me other than that i think there's not really the i mean bielefeld to Köln somehow but you know not really in any case it was a long video but i think it was worth it uh, i need to get a little bit frustration i want to give some background info on bayern i can also tell you that the next video on the prime premier league i probably also will make a little bit of longer this the discourse in two topics uh but you know that's what it is in any case, uh, let, let me know your thoughts on the happenings in Austria and in Germany. And if you have anything to, you wanted to add, especially to what was happening at Bayern, uh, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might actually enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and also hit the little bell icon so that you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day.